of this county know how hard you work to keep Broward County safe. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, Ken. Now, sounds like we're going after some real dirt bags tonight. But first, we got to track down a guy who cops in South Carolina call a virus. Now, he comes on real charming, but his looks are deceiving. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes is a single look. That's often the case when it comes to David Rollins' coffin. One look followed by a few one-liners. Just ask some of the women he's met. He has the light blue eyes that just kind of draw you in. He's a very nice guy to you. He's going to make you believe whatever he wants you to believe about him. And while it was easy to fall for Cawthon's charms, he always turned out to be anything but charming. Paulette Anderson vividly remembers how Cawthon revealed the evil inside of him when she was just 16 and they went for a drive in her car. The time was 1983. The place, Lancaster, South Carolina. Oh, stop. No, stop, 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 stop. We need to, we need to stop. I'm. I'm not ready for this, okay? Stop. Oh, honey, I ain't even starving yet. And he just totally flipped. He started choking me. You know, I was trying to get him off me, but I couldn't breathe. Guess I take your breath away, huh? Now you take them jeans off. You take them jeans off! Take them off! I was terrified, so I did what he told me to do. Yeah, that's good. That was when he raped me. He went through my purse looking for any signs of a guy, phone numbers, pictures, you know what the significance was, I don't know. Get up. Get up! But he's insane. to hear this. He wanted me to hear the car explode. And he said, you do realize how lucky you are you're not in that trunk. He told me, you make a sound you and you won't live to tell a soul. I didn't know where to take her. All right, I'll get rid of her. You stay here. Right now, don't you move. He went in what was like a tool shed. And in my mind, he's looking for something to finish me off. found the shower rod. I'm gonna stab him with it. I'm gonna hit him over the head with it. I'm, I'll beat him to death with it. I don't care. I'm not going through anything else. Follow it. Are you in here? Hell are you doing there, buddy?
I was hysterical. Daddy, it's, it's me. I, please come and get me. It hurt me so bad. I called my parents first and they took me to the hospital and the hospital called the police. But by then, Cawthon had seemingly vanished. For years, he remained on the run, hanging out mainly in Florida. But by the early 90s, cops say Cawthon was back in South Carolina. He went out with bartender Jeannie Young a few times. And when Jeannie broke it off, Cawthon didn't want to let go. Hey, sugar, remember me? He yanked my car door open and started punching me and broke my nose the first punch. And um, he kept hitting me and hitting me until I ended up in the floorboard of the uh, passenger side. It wasn't over until he said it was over. You don't break up with me, girl. I break up with you. I thought I was gonna die that night. You don't mess with me. I just thought that I had a better chance to, to jump out of the car. My feet were dragging the pavement. But he had me by the hair, so I couldn't get out. Do that! Stop that right now! Stop right now! He yanked me out by the hair and told me to dig my grave. I honestly thought I was going to die there. <laughs> please, don't do this to me, please. You did it to yourself. Now dig. I kept thinking, how was I going to get through this? So I got to thinking, well, maybe if I reverse everything and tell him I love him and that uh, we'll get married or and things to be okay and and all that. Maybe that would work. Maybe we really aren't meant to be together. This is my fault, David, not yours. All right. All right. You think we could uh, go to the store? I need something to clean all this blood off. Sure, baby. Okay. In the car. The only thing I had was to play games to get away from him. I'll be right back. Thank you, baby. You bet. <laughs> afraid he was going to find me. But luckily, Cawthon never did. And cops soon had him in custody. I had nightmares afterwards, so I wanted him to pay dearly for what he did. And I didn't want any other victims to be out there. As for paying dearly, Cawthon only served three years for his vicious attack. And as for any other victims, cops say Cawthon wasn't about to stop. In 1996, he met Brenda Steen. Soon the couple would have a little girl. For a while, everything was fine between Brenda and Cawthon. That was until Cawthon realized everything no longer revolved around him. It went from a slap to a beating. He's hit her with shovels. He's punched her eyes. He's kicked her. Anything you can think of to hurt somebody, he done it. On September 11, 2004, right, cops say Cawthon went after Brenda with the intention of killing her. Drop the knife! Get on the ground right now! Drop it! Drop the knife! Now get on the ground! Stop! 
Cawthon was arrested but quickly made bail, and cops say this predator was determined to finish what he'd started. On October 17, 2004, Cawthon returned to Brenda's apartment. This self-proclaimed auto mechanic couldn't get Brenda's car started as he tried to leave in a hurry. Cops say Cawthon was in a rush because he'd stabbed Brenda to death and stuffed her body in the trunk. Cops say Cawthon ended up dragging Brenda's lifeless body to a remote area and left her there. Brenda steamed out of a disease, and that disease was David Cawthon. And she basically contracted that disease the day that she met him. And it was up to Brenda's sister to tell Brenda's daughter that her mommy was gone forever. We told her, Amber, you know, your mama won't be coming back. And she said, why? And I just told her, I said, well, God wanted her to come home to heaven. And if Brenda is in heaven, Cawthon's other two victims want to see him in hell. He's out there, and it's just going to be more and more victims. Now he has a taste of blood because he wanted to kill for a long time. If he's near anybody's mother, sister, daughter, their life's in danger. Come on, one day, I promise you won't regret it. Cawthon's a handyman. He could be working as a roofer or car mechanic and maybe doing work in the New Orleans area. If you've seen him, call us at 1-800-CRIME-TV. I'm with Sergeant Abby Tiger, who heads up this fugitive squad. Abby, you're in charge tonight. Are you guys ready to roll? We're ready. We got some guys that we're going to hook up for you. We've been working hard, and we're ready to go. All right. We're going after our first slime ball. When we come back, going to be a lot of action, so stay with us. Come on, guys. Gather up. 